Rod Brindamore told the News and Observer last month that his learning capacity as an assistant coach had maxed out and he was ready for the next step, to become an NHL head coach. After working with two Carolina Hurricanes head coaches since 2012, Brindamore will finally get that shot. The Hurricanes announced on Tuesday that Brindamore will be the new new head coach. It continues the off-season of change in Carolina that saw Bill Peters leave for the Calgary Flames and Ron Francis get fired from his job as president of hockey operations and replaced by longtime NHL executive Rick Dudley. Also in the press release was the little nugget that Don Waddell, who had been serving as interim general manager since Francis was canned, has the role time now as well as the title of president. Rod is the greatest leader in the history of this franchise, and has earned the opportunity to take charge of our locker room, said Waddell in a statement. We spoke to a number of candidates for this position, but our conversations with staff and players consistently return to the same person. Rod's fresh ideas, ability to motivate and understanding of what it takes to bring a championship to rally will help our young team take the next step toward competing to bring the cup back to North Carolina. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub, if you never try, you'll never know, Brindamore said last month. The reason for saying why not is I've been doing it for eight years and I really believe I can help out one way or the other and see if I can put us over the hump. Brindamore, 47, spent parts of 10s playing for the Hurricanes and captained them beginning with a 2005-06, which ended with a franchise winning its first and only Stanley Cup. Once retired, he also worked in player development with the team. For Tom Dundon, these are safe picks. There's familiarity with the organization and the fact that both are on board with the overhaul the new owner is overseeing. But are they the right ones for the current state of the franchise? The Hurricanes have not made the playoffs since 2010. After coming up short the last fuse as many thought they would take big steps forward, change was definitely needed. So out goes Francis and Peters and talk of a new identity and culture bubbles up. A fresh start was on the horizon, but then Dudley, who is long-time buddies with the new GM, is hired. Now you have Brindamore, who has been on the non-playing side of the franchise's failures for nearly the last decade, is promoted. If you're trying to establish a new identity then why are you holding on to pieces of the past you now have a franchise legend behind the bench on a team that has continually disappointed. You now have a GM who HASNT served as a GM since 2011 when the Atlanta Thrashes were still around. The Metropolitan Division ISNT exactly getting any easier. The approach to free agency and fixing the holes on the roster will be fascinating. This has to work now. Sean Leahy is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Sean Leahy. Taylor Hall had a remarkable 2017-18 for the New Jersey Devils, as he accumulated 39 goals and 93 points in 76 games. That's even more impressive when you consider that he suffered a serious hand injury in December that eventually required surgery. On Tuesday morning, the Devils provided medical updates on Hall, goalie Corey Schneider and forward Patrick Maroon. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub, Hall underwent surgery on April 30 to repair torn ligaments in his left hand. The injury kept him out of the lineup for three games between January 22, 25. The 26-year-old is expected to be ready for the start of training camp in September, which is a huge relief for the Devils. Schneider battled groin, lower body injuries all, and he underwent surgery last Tuesday to repair torn cartilage in his left hip. His recovery is expected to keep him on the shelf for five months, which would put him on track to be ready for early October. That means there's a chance he could miss a good chunk of training camp. As for Maroon, who was acquired from the Edmonton Oilers before the trade deadline, he had to repair a herniated disc in his back. The operation took place last Wednesday. The pending unrestricted free agent is expected to make a recovery before the start of training camp. It'll be interesting to see if the Devils are willing to bring him back into the fold next year. Joey Alfieri is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Joey Alfieri. After an 0-3 start at the 2018 World Hockey Championship, the Belarusian Ice Hockey Federation has decided to make a coaching change mid-tournament. Former Red Wings and Bruins head coach Dave Lewis is out. He'll be replaced by Sergei Pushkov, who was serving as Lewis' assistant.
Of course, the team is calling this a mutual decision, but is it ever? It's easy to see why the Federation WASNT thrilled about the country's start at this year's Worlds. They opened the tournament with three ugly losses to Sweden 5-0, France 6-2 and Russia 6-0. Getting blown out by Sweden and Russia ISNT acceptable, but it's understandable. Losing to France by four goals is a different story. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub, even though they're a long shot to qualify for the quarters, they can still avoid relegation to Division 1 if they turn things around before the end of the tournament the last place team in each division gets relegated. They have four games to pull themselves out of this hole, as they'll take on Switzerland, the Czech Republic, Austria and Slovakia. Lewis had been the head coach of the Belarusian hockey team since December 0 F 2014. HE's coached them at each of the last four World Hockey Championships. They made it to the quarterfinal in 2015. They lost to Canada 9-0, but failed to get out of the round-robin portion of the tournament in 2016 and 2017. It'll be interesting to see where the 64-year-old goes from here. He HASNT had an NHL job since he was let go by the Hurricanes in 2013-14. Could this be the end of the line for him? Joey Alfieri is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at thablog at nbcsports.com or follow him on Twitter at Joey Alfieri. Welcome to the PHT Morning Skate, a collection of links from around the hockey world. Have a link you want to submit? Email us at thablog at nbcsports.com. The Capitals and Predators both came up with huge wins last night, so TSN Scott Cullen took a deeper look at the key numbers for each team. TSN.ca sportsbooks in Vegas may not have seen the Golden Knights' success coming, but they've embraced the position they're in. The Golden Knights have hit the jackpot with different players and it could result in a Stanley Cup sporting news. The Tampa Bay Lightning have taken down the New Jersey Devils and Boston Bruins to make it to the Eastern Conference Final. USA Today looks at five reasons why the Bolts can go all the way. USA Today The Bruins are going to be watching the rest of the playoffs from home, for a few reasons. First, they simply didn't do enough at 5-on-5. Five five. NHL.com If you're not Tampa, Boston or Toronto, the Atlantic Division will be a brutal place to play for the next few years. All three of those teams are clearly ahead of the rest right now. Sportsnet Last year, the Sharks said goodbye to Patrick Marlowe. Is it time to do the same with veteran Joe Thornton, who will become an unrestricted free agent in July? Mercury News Not only did the Golden Knights have incredible players on their top lines, but they've also built up a solid group of depth players that have helped them reach this point. Las Vegas Sun Penguins fans may still have fresh wounds from last night's playoff exit, but it's time to analyze why they failed to get by Washington. The Pittsburgh Tribune looks at the three reasons why they were eliminated. Pittsburgh Tribune Even though the Rangers have said that they're going to be retooling, former NHL coach Dan Bilsmer ISNT buying it. New York Post Former Islanders GM Bill Torrey passed away last week, so Newsday decided to look back at the top 10 moves he made during his tenure in Long Island. Bringing a guy like Dennis Potvin into the organization was a home run. Newsday up top, check out the highlights from last night's game between the Jets and Predators, Joey Alfieri is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at thablog at nbcsports.com or follow him on Twitter at Joey Alfieri. Getting over the hump, getting to Game 7 Capitals 2, Penguins 1, OT, Capitals win Series 4-2 call it later than expected at the right time, but the Washington Capitals finally got the best of the Pittsburgh Penguins in a contemporary series. The overtime clincher seemed to fit the mood of things, too. Alex Ovechkin was on the ice, setting up Evgeny Kuznetsov series winner, while Sidney Crosby was on the other side, seeing his teams push for a third consecutive title end. It WASNT always the prettiest contest in Game 6, but the result was as pretty as anything Washington's seen in sports in some time. Ovechkin Co. finally beat the Penguins, and finally made it to the third round. Predators 4, Jets 0 series tied 3-3 Three of the four second round series have been decided, but fear not, the well get a Game 7 on NBCSN on Thursday. This contest was often closer than the 4-0 score would indicate, but Pekka Rinio was on the top of his game and the Predators' first line was absolutely sensational. Philip Forsberg generated two beautiful goals and generously assisted on an empty netter. That empty netter was the cherry on top for Victor Arvidsson, who also scored the 1-0 tally that would be the game-winner not to mention an assist. 
Ryan Johansson also added two helpers of his own. The Predators refused to see their end, and now the Vegas Golden Knights' third-round opponent will be determined by a winner-takes-all battle in Game 7. Expect fireworks and probably some catfish. NBC's Stanley Cup Playoff Hub 3 Stars 1. Predators Top Line, featuring Forsberg, Let's Cheat and Lump all three into the first star category. Forsberg's goals were so sensational that you can call him the top star and Arvidsson second if you want to be a real stickler about it. Either way, Forsberg's not going to be an under-the-radar star much longer if he continues to dominate the highlight reels night after night, too. Pecorinia, Predators, again, you might look at the 4-0 score and assume that it was a fairly easy day at the office for Rinya, who bounced back from a rough game 5. Rinya had to earn that rebound. The towering Finn made all 34 saves for a shutout with his teams on the line, blunting a dangerous Winnipeg Jets offense and silencing that crowd. The Jets received three power play chances in the first period, yet instead of putting Nashville in an early hole, Rinya helped the Predators maintain that early lead after Arvidsson's goal. 3. Evgeny Kuznetsov, Washington Capitals Hey, when you score the goal that officially puts the Capitals over the top against the Penguins, you probably deserve a spot in the three stars. Kuznetsov had his chances earlier in Game 6, but to no avail, sometimes maddeningly so. Some players sulk and fall off the map. Kuznetsov kept plugging away, and when Ovechkin sprung him for a breakaway in overtime, Kuznetsov scored one of the biggest Capitals goals in recent memory. Quite a nice way to help Washington recover from the loss of Nicholas Backstrom, its other key center. Factoid's not much solace for Sidney Crosby, but he moved up to the all-time rankings with an assist in Game 6. With his assist, Sidney Crosby entered the top 10 all-time playoff points leaders, tying Steve Eisenman with 185 points. Penguins PR at Penn's Blady May 8, 2018 Yes, this is a big deal for Washington, not just the Capitals. A reminder that it's tough to shut down the Jets, but even more unlikely to blank them at home. Jets are shut out for the first time in 53 home games. Last game, March 11, 2017 versus Flames 3-0, Sportsnet stats at SN stats May 8, 2018 This PK Subban factoid might be a bit anecdotal Subban guarantee is now 3-0, Andrew Berkshire at Andrew Berkshire May 8, 2018 Breakpoint Game 7 between the Predators and Jets won't take place until Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. That's a bummer for sure, but maybe spend time with your picnic, walk your dog, wash some dishes. James O'Brien is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at thablog at nbcsports.com or follow him on Twitter at CycleLikeStins.